Every horror franchise is prone to have a reboot. This includes Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Child's Play, you name it, the shoe probably fits the foot. In 2008, Platinum Dunes started working on a Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Now, Platinum Dunes, which is the company responsible for the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, the 2009 Friday the 13th remake, and this film here, the 2010 Nightmare reboot. If you look at this on paper, things are looking pretty good for this film. The 2003 remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is highly favorable in the horror community. And after that, with the 2009 Friday the 13th film, I'm also a pretty big fan of that. Up until this point, Platinum Dunes has had a pretty positive reception of taking reboots and remakes into their hands. This company also almost had the Halloween franchise as well. This 2010 Nightmare remake would break the fucking box office. On a budget of only $35 million, they brought in nearly $118 million. But however, critically, their reception would fucking faceplant. I myself, this is one of my least favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I can sit here and name a hundred things I like and a thousand things that I dislike about this film. As always, this is not a movie review. This film would spawn five deaths, not including Freddy's. And overall, I feel like they're halfway creative with the kills. But it does have its downsides. So if you guys are ready, I'm ready. Welcome or welcome back to Lost Legend TV. I'm Ray. This 2010 Nightmare film is going to be the very last entry of this franchise for the kill ranking. I did not cover Freddy vs. Jason just for the pure fact that Freddy only has one kill in that movie. Coming in at my number one kill is Chris's death. Chris's death in this film is clearly a love letter to Tina's death from the 1984 original film. It follows most of the same guidelines. The biggest thing about this film that I like is the world they created, the atmosphere, the dream world, the dreamscape, the cinematography, just the world they created on set. You mix that in with plenty of good easter eggs from the film. Just like this one here for those guys who might remember this jersey from a very very well known character this is basically tina's death just reimagined however when it comes to brutality I feel like this one really takes the cake unlike the original where tina's crawling on the ground has very limited mobility chris's death really ups the ante where she is just fucking pulverized and ragdolled around the fucking room like it's no fucking problem bouncing wall to wall just getting her shit crushed these brutal impacts against Wild Wild is floating up, down, left, and right like a cheat code. The gruesome slash really sells it as she falls onto the bed and blood just starts pouring out. From the audience standpoint, yes, we have seen this death already. However, I feel like this one does it just a little better. But just for nostalgic purposes, I think I would always prefer Tina's in the original. But on the occasion that I do watch this film, which I'm not a fan of, this is definitely a highlight of it. Coming in at my number two is Dean's Death. Say what you want to about this film. I feel like the best part of this film is the opening. I distinctly remember the first time I ever saw this film. I was visiting my family in Florida because that's where I'm from. And we rented this on DVD. The opening cinematography really sells the world that they built that I was talking about earlier. There's just this darkness, this eeriness, and a certain dial of contrast they use in this opening sequence. The warm color tones as Dean enters this weird, weird ass world in the diner where he sees pigs and shit. And the first time you ever see Freddy, all you see is his glove and you hear that iconic chink. And one thing I love about Jackie Earl is that his mannerisms for the most part don't mirror Robert England's. And yes, I will always prefer Robert England as Freddy, but it's just the little things that you really catch on to as a nightmare on M Street fan. One thing he immediately does in this film is scrape the fingers together. And I love that. The small and subtle cat and mouse game where Freddy's playing peekaboo with Dean. And there's this point where Dean actually wakes up but he falls back asleep. I genuinely enjoy this opening. When Freddy finally gets a hold of Dean, you would think he would go in for the glove kill but he did not. I felt it was really creative making Dean pick up the knife and cut his own throat. Because this scene is just intense. You see Chris walk up to Dean and Dean is just sitting there holding the knife to his neck about to do it. But in the dream world, you know Freddy's making him do it. And that's kind of genius on Freddy's part because it can easily pose as Dean unalived himself right in front of Chris. The why doesn't matter. And then the actual execution is just gnarly when Dean is just scraping his fucking skin open after their short exchange where Dean's like, you're not real. And Freddy says, I am now. Top notch fucking stuff. I wish they would have kept that energy throughout the film. But this opening kill right here really set the mood. At the time as a kid when I saw this, I was like, dude, we are in for a fucking ride. This is about to be off the chain. I was very wrong. Coming in my number three is Jesse's death. I love Jesse's death just for the shock value. 
When he's locked up and he's in the dream world, the dreamscape in this film is phenomenal. While he's locked up and he goes to the boiler room, he actually sees the kids staring at him behind the bowling equipment. And then he sees Freddy and then he runs. But it's a dead end when he sees his friends killed and his girl Chris. This film did half-heartedly stay true until the fuckery of Freddy. Just the simple mind games he plays with you. Just to get off on his own dark, sick, twisted fucking jokes. And this is no different. But once Freddy taunts him, like you think you can bring it back from the dead. And then he just fucking disappears, right? He just disappears in the boiler room and Jesse's just like looking for him. And then boom! He gets the fucking glove straight through his fucking chest. And then after that, to top it all off, it's probably the most well-known moment of the movie. Do you know after the heart stops beating, the brain can live on for seven more minutes? We still got six more minutes to play. Okay, perv. Coming in my number four is Gwen. Gwenny Gwen Gwen. Nancy's mother in this film. I've always had a love-hate for this kill, right? I think the kill is good in the aspect of when you first see this movie for the first time, it's unexpected for sure. And this is another kill that kind of twists the original idea of killing Nancy's mother. The whole mirror smash and then dragging Gwen in and then the mirror coming back together, I think is a pretty nice touch on how to end the movie. But there's something about it that I feel like is just lackluster. Maybe it's because you have sat through this film and the opening, like I said, the diner scene is just fucking phenomenal. But then you spend another probably 70, 80 minutes just trying to power through this. And by this time, you're probably just like, I'm fucking done with this, right? Maybe that's why. And I love how it stayed true to the original in the, is this the physical world or is this the dream world? I do like the open endedness of it, just like the original. But at the end of the day, I won't harp on it. Because when I saw it for the first time, I was like, ooh, damn, Gwen got it. Is Nancy still dreaming or is, is this Gwen's nightmare? Like, what's going on? But that's the idea. The reason is fucking irrelevant. It's supposed to keep you on your toes, keep you guessing. And that aspect, yes, I do like to kill. But by the time you get to the end of the movie, you're just like, eh. You get that shock value the first time, but after that, you're just kind of like, eh. Yes, it's, it's just kind of there. Coming at my number five, my least favorite kill is Marcus. You probably recognize this young man. He was also in the Friday the 13th remake. To give this kill some context, there's just not a whole lot to deal with. I think that's a plus and a con at the same time. Marcus got killed by having his head smashed into a computer. Now when Nancy and them's doing research, I do really love how they painted the picture of there's other kids out there experiencing this. And to see somebody like Marcus sit there just absolutely suffering from sleep deprivation because he knows if he goes to sleep he's gonna die. I love how the movie showed his death. As soon as he had that little micro nap, boom, that motherfucker's gone. So in that aspect, yeah, it's a good kill because you bring in the idea, you paint the picture of what it actually means. But on the other hand, if you take this out, the movie really doesn't change. But let's talk about Freddy's death in here. We see Freddy's death in a nightmare sequence of Quentin's. The plus side to this is, I will say this a thousand times about this movie, I love the world they created for this film. The dreamscape, I love the cinematography, everything about this just feels good, it feels scary, it feels eerie. Quentin's dream about basically Freddy's backstory about who he was and how he got killed, it's just a paint by number Freddy story, right? Like we've seen this before. We already know what happens. Freddy's death itself isn't anything to brag about. We've already seen it a thousand times. Parents come, set his ass on fire. However, they tried to switch it up and have Freddy come out bursting through the door, running at the parents and running at Quentin, which is a badass idea on paper. But to me, this is one of the worst shots of the movie because you get this full-fledged, just fucking CGI, burnt face of Freddy, and it just takes all the steam away from the movie. At the end of the day, I feel like this movie was a swing and miss. It's not all bad. It's definitely one of the worst out there. However, I don't think it is the worst. It's tolerable. I'm probably not going to pick this out of a lineup. There's some great highlights, some great kills, some great moments. My biggest complaint about this movie is... I didn't give a single fuck about any of the characters. The character development in a film like this, particularly a nightmare film, should be a priority. I respect them for changing up the formula and opening up with a kill with the diamond scene, right? I feel like that was a balls move. You really have to take the time to learn these characters, learn what they're going through, relate with them, sympathize with them, and you have to build their world. You have to make this feel real. But I feel like this movie didn't do that. The movie presented itself in a way which, to this day, 14 years later, I still don't give a fuck about any of these characters. I thought Jackie Earl was a great Freddy. I didn't like him cosmetically. 
and they really could have did away with that CGI bullshit. Thank you guys so much for taking part of your day to kick it with me. You know I appreciate it. I love you all. And until next time, guys. Adios.